How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the Milwaukee Rumor Series. The January transfer period is finally here. This very long episode is all going to be dedicated to the January transfer window as we're looking to make some huge signings. And first off, we'll look at some potential future Milwaukee players in Julian Brandt and Timo Werner, both valued at 1 million. And they're going to be high 80s at some point. They are very great prospects and yeah I kinda wanted to make room uh, by selling a couple guys such as Richard Chaplow and uh, Nikki Bailey and also I put Onya Dinma off uh, of loan because he's been great for us um, this first half of the season and there you see they actually won uh, 9 million for Julian Brandt so that's obviously way out of our league and there's just no way we could match the, uh, the, his value and yeah transfer window also often is a very sad time for me because I have to get rid of players that are quite cr uh, that, are, that I like very much and there you see Scott McDonald Scott McDonald actually gets an offer and he's gonna get quite a lot of offers actually. And uh, VfB Stuttgart also wants 9 million for Timo Werner. Then we have Levin Öztunali from Bayer Leverkusen, 18 years old, center defense mid. He's valued at uh, 160,000, so he might be a possible signing for us. And he's also a great prospect. He's supposed to have a potential of 84. According to Foothead, I've scouted him for a long time with the Global Transfer Network and he seems like a very good prospect and if he actually hits that 84 overall that would be huge and yeah this league game against Blackpool we were just we were just not on our game that day and we lost 2-0 as I think that was Renegi's last game, if I remember correctly. And there, Dundee United also wants Scott McDonald. And I rejected offer because he's obviously a very important player. But then I thought, hmm, these guys would uh, would buy him for 900,000. So I thought, might as well do a counter offer. I was not going to believe that they would take it, 1.1 million. Because then again, Scott McDonald is quite old. And... Yeah, it might not be the worst thing to lose him. Obviously, he's a, he was a huge player for us. He's the assist leader in the season. Um, yeah, you may have seen there for Levinets Tonali, they set a price tag for 1.6 million, which is something I actually would be willing to pay. But first, we have a striker here in Bach Finne. I think he's pronounced. And we just I decided to offer a loan contract for 2 million future fee so we can decide at the end if you want to buy him or not and I did the same with Levin Öztunali put a future fee of 1.8 million there I don't know why he was only valued by them at 1.6 million so I could have maybe gone for 1.4 million or something but I just really wanted to get him and yeah to the Scott McDonald's uh, why do I say McDonald's it's not a freaking fast food restaurant um, to the Scott McDonald situation, um, yeah, he's huge. He's a, an experienced center attacking mid. He's made some very important goals for us and very important assists. But then again, Anya Dinma has been playing great recently, and we I'm uh, looking into getting a midfielder anyway. So yeah, there you see uh, FC Köln or Cologne uh, are waiting a bit on my loan offer and Celta Vigo actually matched our counter offer and they're now in contract talks with Scott McDonald so they see Aiden O'Brien is gonna get loaned out and there another transfer offer this this time by Celtic and I thought well Celtic they could uh, let some cash flow pretty much because they're obviously a huge club and there you see, it was, it's actually been in the news, Scott McDonald uh, 
targeted by a lot of teams. Really, I got I got a lot more offers than those I showed you. Everybody wanted the piece of Scott McDonald, and he's the assist leader. And it's very often in this game that if one of your players is leading assists or goals or anything like that, he's gonna get targeted like crazy in the transfer period. They see an FA Cup game actually. I'm not talking a lot of about the games. An FA Cup game against Bolton, and we get the uh, I'm sorry penalty there, but yeah, couldn't couldn't hit it. Scott McDonald couldn't have scored his maybe last goal for Mewo. and yeah, this game was just quite even actually. Both sides had some chances. There, Lee Gregory uh, barely misses that, misses that one. Just a very late slight tackle. And there, Jimmy up two passes it to Wolford, and Wolford in the 19th minute hits the crossbar, which could have put us one round further in the FA Cup. So now we have to play a rematch. And um, there you can see Paul Robinson is returning from loan, and Bayer no fear. Uh, Bayer, Bayer no fear, Bayer, yeah, that, that's how you would say it in German. But they accepted the loan offer for the 1.8 million future fee. And so did FC Köln or Cologne for Barth Finne. So we have a nice new striker. He's supposed to at least hit 81 overall. And a solid center defensive mid. And there you see Scott McDonald has actually been sold, which is crazy. I would have not thought that coming to this January transfer period, but it was very spontaneous. And then, again, for me it makes a lot of sense, even though I hate to see him go. And there's Zachary Bacali, He's also has, he also has a huge, huge uh, potential, and not only I saw it, a lot of other teams saw it, so they were uh, willing to bid a lot more money than we were. There you see we're actually in 8th place right now, and we're playing against Wolverhampton, who we played in last episode too, which is a bit weird, but yeah, whatever. And yeah, obviously with Renegi's departure, I'm glad we could fill that hole at striker position. With Finna who couldn't score there, which is quite unfortunate, because their Wolves make it 1-0. And yeah, I'm also looking to get another striker, which you're gonna see in a second. As I said in the last episode, I'm mainly looking into the offensive positions like strikers and uh, midfield. And they see Ryan Letson, 17 year old from Everton. He's also he also has a high potential and comes along quite quite cheap as it seems like. So we offer a loan deal with a future fee of 100,000 pounds. And there's the rematch of the FA Cup game against Bolton and yeah it was again a very even game he's there there with the cross to Fuller but Fuller with the header couldn't find the back of the net and there ups and Jimmy Abdu but Jimmy Abdu not the greatest finisher at all and there Bolton almost makes it 1-0 uh, at the end which would have kicked us out of the FA Cup and there Lee Martin Beautif beautifully gets through the defense and with a little bit of luck he manages to score this in the 97th minute but Bolton didn't take long to answer back with a nice attack of their own pretty much from the kickoff and just terrible defending on my part and in the 100th minute they managed to equalize and there what a beautiful counter attack and look at Bath Finne go Oh my god, just no chance for the defenders. And a beautiful finish to the near post. Puts up puts us up 2-1 against Bolton and Yeah, it was just a huge moment for Bart Finner scoring his first goal for Mewo. And yeah, looks like we've made quite a nice transfer as the game ends here. We win in the rematch. 2-1 in extra time, just crazy dramatic game, 
Uh, we didn't manage to score. Either, neither team could manage to score in 180 minutes. But then in 30 minutes there was three goals. And yeah, to the new uh, strikers I was gonna get, I've had two uh, offensive players, rather, right, because he's not a striker, okay, Rangel. Um, I've had two like guys I was looking on, Adam Armstrong, but 875,000 for a 17 year old might be a bit too much, but then again, I also offered for 11 at Sonali a whole lot. There, Ryan Lesson, they actually don't want to let him go. He's uh, They also know he's a quite a quality prospect. And there we have Gideon Zaleilem. And we also offered a loan uh, contract for a future fee of 400,000. So now we have a game against Reading. Looking at the table, they're just a couple plays ahead of us as we're in 11th now. And this game was about to start very shit until Malone makes an incredible save. I don't know how he did it, but that definitely sparked us. As Malone again in the action here, Summer gets a penalty there. Uh, it was weird, the defender tried to clear the ball, I think, and then hit Malone, and it was a penalty. So Shawnee Williams easily scores that to make it 1 0 in the 39th minute. And yeah, I have Gregory playing here, and he puts a nice through ball to Onya Denma, and Onya Denma again with a beautiful finish. Just wow, this guy sometimes finishes like as if, was, if, as if he was a striker. He's also quite fast, and he has great ball control for a player who's not even in the 60s. There, a ridiculous shot by a Reading player. I didn't see the name, I'm sorry. In the 76 minute to cut this lead short, 2-1, to one, just... Wow, what a beautiful strike there. David Ford with no chance, but there's Lee Gregory again, passing it to Ed Stonali. To Onya Dinma, back to Gregory, and Gregory makes it 3-1 to decide this game, to end it, game over, go home Reading. And yeah, that's it, another three points against a about equally leveled opponent. There we have a transfer for Richard Chappell by Derby County. And I decided to counter it. And Arsenal didn't want to um, let Zalalem go on a future fee. And there again I tried to get Ryan Letson for 420,000 this time. And Derby County didn't want to pay that much I think. They wanted to pay 500,000 so we took that. And there we might have our next signing. Godfrey Donza. Oh also young player 18 years old. Center mid. And he also has a high potential. So he could be a, a good replacement for Scott McDonald. And they actually accept my offer for him for... Um, I forgot what, what uh, how much it was. I think it was some, something around 800,000. And yeah, he didn't want to take the uh, contract offer first. Because he... Uh, was afraid to miss home, so I gave him a bit more, maybe a bit too much. And there we have a very interesting guy. In, interesting guy, Yassine Benzia. Only valued at 1.1 million. He's a great prospect. He's been quite good in career modes in FIFA the last couple of years. So we're definitely gonna make an offer for him for 900,000. And they actually accepted it. 900,000. Pretty crazy, right? As Godfrey Donza also accepts finally accepts our uh, contract offer and you seen Benzia we offer him a four-year deal six thousand a week and a role as an important first team player and uh, I really had to get rid of quite a few guys because I've had I if I wanted if I was to keep both Levin at Sonali and Bart Finne I would have I would have to have 3.8 million so that's quite a lot. Uh, I mean, we could also ask the board for some money, but I was getting rid of some guys anyways. And yeah, we now have a game against Sheffield Wednesday. I think in the FA Cup. I'm pretty sure it's the FA Cup the next round. Yeah, it is. Uh, that's just a weird goal there. This ball should have gone out. But somehow it gets through this tackle. I just decided to show you the replay there. And yeah, 
long time not happening a lot much uh, a whole lot but there the new the newcomers make it 1-1 Donza with beautiful over the top ball to Yasin Benzia who finishes it perfectly to equalize so yeah a nice start for Benzia's Milwaukee career and there there was Benzia again and look at him go a bit like Bart Finne in his debut and he just blows past the defenders almost makes that don't uh, makes that combination for the 1-1 one -one reverse as he was passing into Donza and Donza gets past the defenders can't finish it right there to get us to win late but hold on we're we were not done there we're really fighting for the decisive goal and they're a beautiful over the top ball again to Benzia and Benzia oh my god that finish with his left foot Benzia is a huge player I'm telling you I'm I was so excited that I got him he's just great at finishing he's got good speed just what you wish for in a striker and he's only gonna get better so we have some great years to look forward to his, we have him for at least four years unless some 60 million deal is gonna be made there you see unfortunately we we sell Nicky Bailey for five for 600,000 the counter offer but they won't accept it so just 500,000 very sad I like Nicky Bailey a lot but you gotta do what you gotta do we need some money and yeah we also want to make, make this team younger there you see Chelsea 35 million for Karim Benzema. Oh my god, I don't even want to get promoted because Chelsea would be killing us. And there you see, I get actually rid of Lee Gregory. I'm sorry, Keen50, who commented on one of my videos. Um, I've uh, this is this was played long before uh, this certain video was uploaded, episode 3. If I had read that earlier, I would have probably kept him. I know he's great in real life right now but yeah still we have too many strikers so I have to get uh, those who are going for anything I have to get rid of them and there you see Jackson Martinez for 25.5 million to Borussia Dortmund and yeah I think you saw our c kind of a resume there for us we actually made more profit than uh, we made uh, than money we gave away so that's quite nice, but we have to spend quite some money next transfer period or when the loan deals run out for Levinet Sonali and Bart Finne if we want to keep them, which right now it looks like we have to keep them. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this very long episode. I just wanted to get the whole January transfer window done. I appreciate all the support. Put in the comments whatever you feel like could make the series better like I said last episode tell me some good young guys with a high potential who, ca who I also could get quite cheap this time especially on the defensive side some goalkeepers definitely as David Ford is also getting up there in age and yeah leave those players in the comments I'm definitely gonna take those into consideration and I'm definitely gonna thank you guys if I sign one of those in my video I'm gonna get a shout out if you want to obviously so yeah that's now finally it I've been blabbering way too long now subscribe for more Millwall Karima series ultimate team videos and ultimate team pack openings tune in next time see you guys then goodbye